Stay tuned for a sneak preview for this next episode. I think it's just natural for humans to grow attached to things that we can either hold or see. But this knotted ball of glass on my desk, why do I have it? And we like to, we like to remember those things as humans, for whatever reason that is. I don't know. What's up, guys? I'm Kay Petrie. Welcome to another episode of the Speakeasies. Joining me today are Grady Thompson and Polo de los Santos, as always. And this, this topic's actually a surprise for some of my uh, co-hosts. They don't know what we're talking about. And I just wanted to tell a little story like I did beginning of the last episode that I started on my desk a couple weeks ago, actually. A couple weeks ago, I suggested that we talk about the f- uh, our most favorite thing that we have on our desks right now but then grady doesn't actually have a desk and polo just doesn't have any favorite things and it was just just a a terrible time just in general but i started looking at my desk and i have a lot of i'm I'm a traveler so i have a lot of ah souvenirs and knickknacks on my desk and i mean some of them are like you know just like something that everybody gets like i have you know, everybody gets like a statue, a mini statue of the Eiffel Tower when they visit Paris or France. That's just something that everybody does. I don't actually have one of those on my desk. It's on my little shelf in my room, which I put a ton of other travel items, but that's off topic. On my desk, I've got a couple things. Like there's a statue of Big Ben here and there's this, I went to a glass blowing factory in Venice and I have this weird blown glass. Like it looks like it's just, it's one long I guess string, not a string, one long tube, I guess, of glass that the maestros have wrapped around itself. It's kind of like a knot, but it's of of solid glass. And I thought it was just really, really cool. So I bought it. It was a little bit expensive, but affordable for a low budget traveler like myself. But looking at it again today, because this was this was over two years ago, I got this looking at it again today, I started to wonder why as human beings physical objects are so important to us i i understand of course we need physical things like food and and shelter and clothes but this little knotted up ball of glass that i have on my desk isn't giving me anything i need to survive but why do i have it and why do other people have things like this as well well um i guess it's of course it is the uh the sentimentality of it all right i mean we like to remember things we like to remember people i guess i'm saying this and i'm looking at some of the the i guess knickknacks that i have because even though like you said i don't really have a desk but i have a lot of useless things (laughs) that's one word for it but uh like i have a little mini statue of cat dog um what is that out of curiosity like i like cat dog i have no idea what it is you don't you don't know what cat dog is cat dog was a a cartoon from the 90s about um um, a baby, one fine day with a wolf and a purr, a baby was born and it caused a little huh. stir. It was not a green eyed bunny or, a, you know, I'm okay. Sorry. I'm just trying to <laughs> quote the, the theme song here, but cat dog is a, uh, is a 90s show about a, a, a mix between a cat and a dog. And I have a statue of that, but, um, I also have like statues from yellow submarine movie. Um, I have globes. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't really have things that are, uh, sentimental except for a little uh uh, like a jade dragon statue but even that i just bought that because it looked cool but anyway i still will stick with the fact that it's a sentimentality thing because you were just talking about your travel gear right or not your gear but your travel souvenirs and of course when you see that you think of your your travels to paris or england or wherever you went wherever you got this it gives you a good feeling right and we like to we like to remember those things as humans for whatever reason that is i don't know but as for me, most of the little knickknacks that I buy are just things that I, I think are cool. Like, like I have a, I have a replica. I say replica. I have a, uh, an apple that is made out of styrofoam, and I just keep that on my bookshelf because I thought that was cool. So like, I'm, I'm sort of proving my own point wrong, but that's my theory. Polo. Now, I think we. So when you talk about material items, are you just talking about like souvenirs or are you just talking about well, anything? I, I don't know. What, what, I, what I'm trying Besides to say is why are humans stuff? so attached to physical objects that they do not require 
to survive. Things like food and shelter, of course, and clothing. But this knotted ball of glass on my desk, why do I have it? Well, I think for the most part, it's it's stems from the fact that humans have all these five the the five senses. But the what I I guess want to focus on for this particular concern is uh, touch and sight, right? You know, so we use those the most, of course, besides hearing. Well, I, we we use all five, right? But those two are highly used in today so i think it's just natural for humans to grow attached to things that we can either hold or see like music that's not a material thing is it so can't really talk about that but well i mean i enjoy it uh, no it's definitely not a material <laughs> well, thing. yeah yeah but like like the, the fit there's physical paper of course, but other than that I, I i agree that it's not a material we have, thing we have instruments but... and we have physical like but i sheet, i was gonna music, say but... i think people can i was gonna say i think people can grow just as connected to a song as they do to a souvenir or i not souvenir but just anything because it's just about what that means to you what you've experienced in context of that that's my that's my thing whatever it is you just attach and associate the feeling that you had at that moment with whatever it is you're listening to or seeing or or holding yeah. Actually, here was my. Oh, yeah. Go yeah ahead. Actually, when you, I like how you bring that up, Grady, because that's actually is a great, great point. I think also that these, if you're talking about, let's just say that your glass knot or whatever it is on your desk, I think you would agree with me to say it was. It, it reminds you of all the senses merging together in that one moment, and now this knot embodies all of it when you when you touch it or when you hold it so i think grady's point is absolutely correct all right now here was my thing as we as we started to talk about this and grady grady ah uh, could you could you summarize what you thought it's yeah what i said about um essentially that you associate whatever you're listening to looking at or holding with the experience you the experiences you um had with that okay okay now i was thinking something along those same lines as well for instance when i look at when i look at the little ball of glass on my desk i think of i think of venice and how horrible venice actually smells i'm not, i'm not kidding it's it's pretty bad and i think about how we got lost in the alleys and how we went to take a gondola and it was 60 euros for a, a, a half hour ride for each person and and of course, we didn't take a gondola because that's obscenely expensive. But I, is it is it a personal thing for me? Is what I'm trying to answer. Because when I let's let's say I have a friend over to my house and they walk into my room, I don't usually let people in my room. This is this is my space. It's also a mess, but I don't let people in my room because that's just the person I am. And if they come into my room, am I going to am I going to talk about this thing to them? Most likely not. I mean, they might see it and they'll think it's cool, right? Like how I saw it and I thought it was cool before I bought it. And we might talk about it a little and I'll say, oh yeah, I got that in Venice. And they were like, oh, you were in Venice? And I was like, yeah. And it was it was fun for the day that I was there. But beyond that, I think I want to go a little bit deeper with it. It's We keep things like this around us because they are subconscious reminders of not not only who we are, but who we used to be, and the sum of our experiences and our memories. You know, um, I, I hate to interrupt you here, but I'm I'm thinking of everything you're saying, and everything I'm saying even, and I'm trying to look at the things in my room, and to what extent that is applicable. And for most of my my things, it's not really the case. So I think another I suppose theory that I have is, for me at least, a lot of the stuff that I have in my room is almost like a fodder for creativity to some extent. Because like I said, I had that cat dog statue. I have little, I have a yellow submarine poster, yellow submarine statues. I have a cactus pinata, um, globes, all kinds of random things that are just things that I really like. But I think to some extent, they sort of like not inspire me, but they 
just those are things that are very creative maybe not the cactus pinata but um a lot of the other things are things that are very creative and things that i i when i do creative works whatever that may mean i i guess i sort of take inspiration from so maybe that could be do you something think they're uh, your the objects that you surround yourself with are expressions or extensions of yourself i suppose to some extent i mean well i, I yeah because there are things that i like so there, there are things that I guess sort of embody me, but, um, but let's say that if you're me and nobody really comes into your room, who are you expressing yourself to? You're expressing yourself to yourself. Well, I just it's like, like your just, past self talking to you, your future self, well, I'm just your like, present self. I just like surrounding myself with things that I like, I guess. Hmm. I suppose it's different for everybody then. That's true. People collect different things for different reasons. Well, to yeah. bring that up, you you bring up a good point that I want to mention too is now you let's I I assume you guys are talking just about collectible items right in your room now that's a great indication of everything about well not everything but a lot of things about someone so for like even socioeconomically right so let's say you don't go visit places that much or you don't collect souvenirs because they're like massively overpriced as you know people yes. suck they, they, re they really are not if you're good at bargaining though yeah but for the most part they're absurdly expensive right so i think that these material items re are okay maybe not i don't want to say have some sort of indication to yourself but at least are a good indication for other people at least of who you are and what your life is like so for someone who may not have as many uh, collectible items like I do, like I do, I don't really have anything collectible from my travels, but I do have tools, and I think that represents my tinkering mind. You know, I have my camera and some screwdrivers out and various stuff. So we almost sort of like to set up our own environments around ourselves is what you're saying look like we yeah. take ourselves and and surround ourselves with our mentality in our room like i share a room with my brother so i guess you can say it's like sort of split but um but even then you can identify which objects are yours and which are your brothers and if oh, someone yeah. knows you very well they can identify oh that's that's definitely grady's poster or that's grady's brother's poster yeah well, well, sort of. We're we're sort of similar in some respects, but uh, yeah, definitely what you're saying. Um, well, that br kind of, this kind of brings us back to the topic that we had last week with the the well, or two weeks ago with the the fashion and branding. Oh, yeah. Now, I think if our we have such an affinity for these material objects because, like our fashion and brands, it kind of rep shows to the world and to ourself who we are and what who we want to be so maybe subconsciously kate i don't know you have that not from venice because you want to remind yourself that you are a traveler and that you have been the places that are exotic and diverse and maybe grady wants to remind himself that he is a, a more creative person a more vibrant person and i th i guess i with all the stuff on my desk want to maintain my idea that i am a tinkerer or a meddler i guess <laughs> meddler yes you know maybe one thing's for sure of all this we are living in a material world and i am a material girl to quote madonna <laughs> but um Every... Yeah, th I think this was a I, I think this was a good discussion. I think we all sort of uh, delved into our personalities a bit more. Uh, hopefully, we, we we got the audience, you guys, to uh, take a take a bit away from this. Maybe take a closer look at the things you surround yourself with, what that means to you. But it looks like we're sort of approaching that time where we got to cut it off. So I'm here with with Caden and Polo. And uh, this is the Speakeasies. Thanks for listening. And be sure to check us out on YouTube, Instagram, iTunes, Podbean, 
you, you know, you know the list. Thanks. Check us out next week.